Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pumpkin Emoji. This is episode four. As always, I am one of your hosts, Rodrigo Borges. You all know me as Rod. Uh, I'm joined tonight with the always handsome Jeffrey Koval. <laughs> hello, hello. And I was gonna say, we're, we're in episode four already. That, that's insane. We are. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Three people have already been sacrificed to the pumpkin god. That's true. Oh, oh man, yeah. am I next? Well, no, oh. and to further finish up the introduction, we have yeah, Ian yeah. Elliot, creator of The yes. Sun Vanishing <laughs> with us, and before he, he fears for his own life, no, at the end of the stream, you, the guest, choose someone from the chat to be, uh, to be, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I donated, but that's not the word. That's not the I, I should have, I should have. I should have clarified that. No, Aiden, you're not going to be killed tonight. You get to choose somebody to kill, which is twice as good as being killed. Yeah, man, That now I'm sold. Yep. So, yeah, welcome to episode four. We got some people already here. Michael Anderson's in the chat saying pumpkin to a bun bunch of people. <laughs> he's, he's doing a uh, girl in marketing for us. Sweet. <laughs> And what? as much as I enjoyed the little um, town builder game you played last time, I think it's going to be cool to get back into a, a horror game. Me so, too. Uh, it Me was kind of like a, a peaceful break, and Marn was delightful, but now we'll see some some gore and spooky shit. True. Yes. I, yeah. The thing is, like, I, I failed to check whether or not that game had flashing lights, and I didn't want to be, you know, a problem for anybody else. But I did check this one game out, and it does not have flashing lights. There you go. Hey, and it's very for spooky. Anything, anything that's, like, independent or, like, SCP, I expect it to be a fun game. But I don't think them to really be taking, like, you know, consumer practices in mind when they're developing them. That's that's true. That's fair. All right. That's let's against their whole existence. Indeed. <laughs> let's, let's switch over to the game we're playing tonight. And that game is... Uh, the Blair Witch game, and oh. uh, let me let me stream it for you and Jeff, Aiden. Y'all can watch Perfect. through the through here. Is it working? Do you see my mouse moving? Ye yes. Yep. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm in my room by myself with headphones on and the lights are off. So let's get this thing started, shall we? <laughs> Not by yourself. Have you, you, have have you played this here. before? I've never played this before, but I did see a little bit of a playthrough. Okay. Okay. So, Aiden, let's let's get this uh, let's get the ball rolling early here. Uh just to yeah. cl to clarify for the people that might not be familiar with you or with your work, which I find is a little bit difficult, but we'll get the, into that later on. Um <laughs> you are the creator of The Sun Vanished, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Can you give us like a, a, a short little lowdown on what Sun Vanished is? Yeah, so it's um, it is a uh, ARG or unfiction project, depending on how you want to categorize it. But <clears throat> it all takes place on Twitter between three different Twitter accounts. Each one is a character telling their uh, sequence of events of this apocalyptic story that's going down where the sun disappears uh, and there is a lot more to it than that with um, creatures roaming around and these characters are trying to survive and also kind of figure things out and figure themselves out in the process um, and said Twitter story is also uh, being in, in the process of being adapted to a uh, a web series at some point but currently a short film uh as a proof of concept that's excellent i, I see you you posting little not promos but some excitement for that you know every couple of weeks or, or however long yeah yeah production is ramping up i'm 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 super stoked it's so i mean awesome. you don't have to if the details aren't ironed out or you don't want mm -hmm. to divulge too much you know so soon is it going to be an extension of the web series or is it going to be its own standalone piece of it kind of both it's a so uh, I'll, I'll give some background so i've been working on this web series idea since I was about a year into The Sun Vanished. So now it's been about 
uh yeah i guess it's been okay. two years dang two years or yeah, yeah no the sun vanish has been out for two years um so it's been a little it's... over a year that i've been working on this web series project. wait it's only been two years yeah no way it was it was, <laughs> it was in it was in april yep holy wow okay go on i'm just dumbfounded <laughs> well so um so i because i i really like i really enjoyed doing the unfiction thing and like being a part of this this arg like kind of idea and and telling stories in this way but also while i've been working on that i've also been thinking like you know this would be really cool to see portrayed cinematically on a larger budget that's true uh, in some capacity so i have been working on this kind of anthology web series that takes place inside the universe of TSV to where like, it doesn't follow the characters from the Twitter account necessarily, but it is people going through like a different sets of characters going through this same scenario uh, right. at different time periods. So we're, t we're, we're, we're it's kind of like a telltale the walking dead approach to it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So okay. well, excellent. got it. That's I've been working on that for a while. I realized I was biting off a little bit more than I could chew, um, and really wanted to to get something out there to show like it's something more than just what's in my head of this concept. So I have taken a uh, a couple of scenes from the web series, and I've kind of like condensed it and re created it a little bit uh to fit as a standalone short film okay um to kind of it's pretty it's self-contained but it's also like you feel like you've just been dropped into the middle of the story um which i think is super interesting i'm i'm curious how that will how we'll pull that off <laughs> but uh uh so that's going to be a proof of concept that I'm just producing on my own and then seeing where we can go from there if something happens from that. That's really cool. And I think even, you know, with how far spread the, the Twitter account, you know, that side of the project got, I think, you know, from a production standpoint, it's amazing that like your elevator pitch is, you know, like bulletproof. The sun vanished. It's there in the name. It's like, what's the premise? You know, the end of the world. The sun's gone. How do people deal with it? I, right. I know, like, on a personal level, like, God help my relatives who, like, I heard you did a, you know, web series. What's it about? And it's like, uh, shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> having that, you know, elevator pitch, I, I think from the get go is, I don't know if you lucked into that or if, like, that was the idea that inspired you, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I think it for me, it kind of, and this is kind of the approach I always take with everything I make is like, what do I like? What am I interested in? And I love the high concept stuff, and I love incorporating that as much as I can into the media that I create. I also like it being uh, as accessible as possible with still be being like as pretentious as it can be because I'm a pretentious prick, and I love <laughs> doing. I love doing stuff like that. So I like try to like slip in those little things. So never going like a hundred percent a 24, but having it like be blockbuster enough where a big audience can appreciate it and also have the depth of an a 24 movie or, you know, a, a more complex nuanced story. I mean, obviously something's, you know, going right there. You have half a million followers for a, a web series on Twitter. That's, insanity to me like usually people yeah. see the twitter as you know, this extraneous tool and i think like at least very recently this is like a one one of the bigger projects that i've seen really you know find success with that like you might have a, a great story out there but you're you're telling it to a dozen people half of which right. are accounts in the story already <laughs> exactly that is that yeah. is very true and it, well, it's and very it be... yeah go, sorry, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead no go ahead go ahead got it well, I was just going to say, and maybe you were thinking about this too, but it it makes me wonder, like, what I would love people to look at, because for The Sun Vanished, a lot of, I've seen a lot of accounts pop up that are, like, very obviously based on it, which is super flattering, and I, I totally get it. But the thing that I hope people get out of The Sun Vanished is 
making making a project like this marketable to a large demographic getting all the people there um and and having it more than just you know the 12 people because i think it's totally doable um just with the right execution and the right plans in mind to get you know be thinking about your your neighbor down the street what he would think of the project you right. know what mm. he would get out of it or you know a, a friend that has no idea that you're into filmmaking or into creating these weird projects online like having that stuff in mind makes a huge difference and i think it makes stuff way more accessible and that's the i think that's the thing that i've been really craving in other projects in our field like Jeff, I mean, I love Everyman Hybrid so much, but it's also super high concept. <laughs> so it's oh, like, oh no, thank you. I was gonna say, like, I appreciate that, but I completely acknowledge. If you got in late, then you know, good luck. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah, it, which has its own merit, just because it's said. You know, there's a kind of a mystery allure to that in itself. Um, so I think, yeah, there's a couple of ways that you can go about it, and I think all of them can be uh, successful in some way. But I want to see more. I, I want to see, like, even stuff that, like, it would be super cool to see ARGs and unfiction projects that even aren't horror. Like, stuff that is, like, like dramas or, you know, doesn't have to be this specific niche. Although, to be fair, the horror genre really lends itself to, you know, an immersive project like yeah. this. I was about to say, like, it, it, it's, I, I would say it's very difficult to do ARG or an immersive storytelling like this that isn't horror. Um, like, e even, we were, we were talking about this before we started, um, even Blazeball is horror adjacent. Oh, it is silly, it is insane, but it is horror Just adjacent. Stuff. Yeah. Like, this isn't a normal story. Yeah, absolutely. That, that unnerving nature of, like, Oh, cool! So the so the moon is being swallowed. Great, amazing! I love that. <laughs> so yeah, with you know, kind of going with, with the you know broad appeal approach to that, and it being you know, mostly condensed to a few accounts or you know, really one main you know portal for all that. Did you ever get like caught up in trying to like make sure everybody was like aware of what was happening? Was it do you ever have you know, people constantly spamming you like I have no idea what's going on or like did you ever like build in any like like a wiki or something to to keep your story on track or did you leave it up to them to, to like the community to do that? I kind of left it up to the community and I don't I still don't really know how well that <laughs> turned out <laughs> just just because there you know there is so as the story goes on you know naturally it's just gonna get more and more complex and there's gonna be more stuff to to uh dig into um but i think also see that the the only thing that i've noticed that's a problem with having the the giant appeal and like having something go quote unquote viral like this is there's a lot of people who are um just like surface level superficially invested um and only check into the tweets and are like oh wow that's crazy that you know this is happening but it's you know because it's normal people and not like crazy weirdos like us who like take a week to like dig into one project sure you know the it's a definitely a different beast to tackle um getting those types of people to be interested and invested enough to like build a quote unquote community. There's a, a like a subreddit, but it uh, there's not a whole lot going on there. Um, and Discord servers as well. And those also, it's just kind of, you know, that's something that I'm also wanting to kind of, and this is actually getting into another point of like future plans, but I'm really wanting to kind of restructure the Twitter account after this story arc is over to mm. facilitate more community um collaboration and it be it be more of a community project rather than uh just you know me on a soapbox for you know two years <laughs> you know just doing this on it's my own kind of funny and this might not be exactly what you're describing but i feel like with the more like you know, social media apps come out and everything they all start adding new things and 
developing in a certain way that slowly it just starts turning back into a message board again and it's like yeah. that might just be the easiest way for tons of strangers to process information at the same time yeah. I like I like Discords, but Rod might vouch this. Like I always jokingly say how much I hate Discord because yeah. uh, it's a great tool. You know, it's great for like video chats and stuff. But if you know, God forbid, I have my notifications on my one friend, you know, my Xbox friends group chat, it would drop me up a wall. So like I mm. personally appreciate something like Reddit or a message board infinitely more than a live chat room because I I feel like personally, if it's something I care about, I know. I'm not going to be anxious about it, but I'm going to be like obsessively trying to keep up to date with everything. Yeah. Huh. That's super interesting. I didn't think about it like that, but that makes total sense. Yeah, no. And that's the thing. Like everybody has, you know, what works for them. But I, I just realized myself recently, like, like I said, with all the apps and stuff and like just how like what Facebook is trying to do to keep people, you know, involved and how they moderate and everything. And it's like right. eventually it's like break all social media. Give me a Twitter and a message board and I'll be happy. But yeah, you know, that's just me being a <laughs> boomer in my twenties. Although No, I mean it, I, I, that I, seems fair to me. <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree with it because cause the, the idea of a message board is is pretty much like these apps can be as sleek as they want. They can be as like filled with, with functions and whatnot. But if we take Discord for what it is at its bare bones, it is a message. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's something I, I kind of realized too, and it's like that's kind of just like the next progression of it. It's just a lot more, you know, it's fast paced, but it, it's it's really not anything new. You know, that's what are those old um those old text chats called RMS or something? Uh, B they were basically like before BBS? AOL, but like before message boards, it was just like this relay text message that you would log into a server. It was almost like a vent I, server. Are you talking about IRCs? Like, that might be it. I yeah. have no idea. I don't think the I was around for that. I do. Yeah, no, I don't, it's actually, it's, X, it's so. funny. It's like the old, <laughs> like, college <laughs> groups and stuff. Like, before the internet was really adopted, it was like, that was, like, where you went to talk to people. Internet relay chat. There you go. Thank you, Xer. Yeah. You uh, sound like a goddamn fool. <laughs> IRCs. Okay. Yeah, instead, I was just uh, name-dropping Rod's uh, initials. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, the RMS chat. Yeah, the RMS anyway. Borges. Get it by... Yeah. Yeah some guy but yeah i mean it's humans that we all like we talk and we like leaving our ideas out there so it's all just variations on that very simple premise it's just what's going to stick around and I, I think it's kind of like tying back to um i, I want to say we were talking to marn rod about this it's like right i mean aiden i give you credit for making a hugely successful arg on twitter but we were discussing how much of a different audience something like twitter or tiktok is in even as much as the cesspool as youtube comments are it seems oh, like there's a, yeah. a difference between those worlds and 100%. personally this is what i was joking about being a boomer about it it's like i want no like I, someone comes to me and pitches the most brilliant arg oh yeah and it's on tiktok here's a thousand dollars do what you can with it i want no part of moderating that i do not <laughs> want to deal with the send fee picks clan of the world I, I don't want to deal with the spamming I, I don't know it's it's a different world but to be fair the the, the send fee picks clan is everywhere <laughs> well now they are because we tolerated them for too long oh, oh wow my God. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Damn, line in the yeah. sand you know what that's fair you gotta no, make a yeah, statement I, mean, <laughs> I think yeah I totally do well it I always deal with this with TSV because every time I post an update, you know, all of the top replies are are memes that are completely unrelated. So it's like it's like navigating that is super interesting and trying to figure out how to like is that positive feedback? Is that negative? Do people really <laughs> give a shit? Like memes what like suffering. Yeah, like I don't it's weird, especially coming from like consuming stuff like Marble Hornets and Everyman Hybrid and that like that uh subsection of the internet being used to that and how like youtube comments operate how that feedback works twitter is an absolute mystery to me most of the time mm -hmm. i'm just kind of fumbling my way through it yeah you'll you'll find comments of like you know thousand comment deeps of nothing but shit posts next to like the top lines in the country diving into a you know blockbuster case 
So I, I think, you know, it's definitely a lot of information process, but Twitter has its uses and I'm not just completely complaining about s social media. It's just for sure. I mean, it's interesting the different worlds you have to prepare if you're producing in it. Yeah, and, totally. and that's why, at least on EMH side of things, we had characters use the the chat, you know, use it as a communication tool. But at a right. certain point, we're just like, whenever we release a video, we're tweeting the link, and that's the end of that. Like, just don't yeah. get too caught up on it, because you know, me personally, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. That's fair. Well, yeah, and with 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 EMH as well, and I feel like this is kind of the interesting trend progression with any like series like this it kind of ends up getting more and more long form and cinematic towards the end oh yeah in a way where like like by the end of vmh you know, as far as i understand unless there's something i'm missing but the, like all you really need to do is follow the 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 youtube and and see that play out and it's all fairly self-contained by by the end um, yeah and that i think you know one way or another what we were all just discussing about how loud all of that can get that was a result of exactly that it was like uh, you don't want to have to be bending over to giving people information and constantly explaining everything but yeah. at the same time you, you can't leave viewers in the dark you know you can have something as pretentious and highbrow as you want it to be but if literally nobody understands it then did you really like pull anything off for sure and it's not yeah. like you, you don't need to sit there and have like a you know panel at comic-con to explain your project but if <laughs> absolutely everybody's like you know what the fuck is this then you, like i said you're not succeeding anywhere you have to right. like give them something to work with yeah totally well that yeah that's why it's interesting because the the TSV audience contrasts really hard with my other project, Factors of Zero, which is all YouTube at this point. It's just YouTube videos. So, um, and that's also like a way more high concept, high brow type project. So it's just interesting to see the dichotomy between <laughs> interactions with, with those two. Uh, You'll get like thesis statements versus spongebob memes <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> even though ironically i would probably like rather them be flipped like i would rather get spongebob memes for factors of zero and get <laughs> thesis statements for the sun vanish maybe it's just a grass is greener um like mentality but oh yeah no it, that's i think that's what it is it's always not going to be ideal because you're 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 doing it live you know it, it's something totally. that's out there it's not finished yet. You can't sit back and say it's done. So it's always going right. to be like that when something's ongoing. Yeah. Well, and that's the, it, yeah, it's a constant learning process. And it being a, a long form series like that really makes it difficult to, especially like, like I, like to be completely honest with you, I, I look back on a lot of like moments in TSV. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I wish I did that better. I wish I did this better. Yeah, um, and yeah. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure like all of us do that with our projects. But oh, I think the I think the difference is for me is that it's extra frustrating when it's um, something that's not even complete yet, <laughs> where it's like, oh, I'm not even done, and I got all the stuff that like I wish I could redo. Which is another reason why I really want to try tackling the this universe through a cinematic lens. Um, just to have it way more self-contained and more like this is my vision this is like the way that i want it to be and i can put it out there when i'm satisfied when it's all this this one thing is completed yeah so so do you i mean as far as i see on on social media you are pretty transparent with the behind the scenes stuff that um were you ever trying to keep it totally like there is no creator to this. No one knows me. I, I'm strictly in game on this account. Or did that fall apart pretty quickly? Well, that fell apart super quick. I mean, I didn't. Uh, there was a point where I like officially announced it um, pretty early on in the uh, in the lifespan of of the Sun Vanished. But it, um, I, I never really cared about that to be honest. No, <laughs> I just that, did it out fine. of. I just I know some people no, handle that very differently, you know. Oh yeah, well yeah, like 
see that's always something i love discussing and 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 talking about uh in these types of interviews is just like the this is not a game approach oh, yeah. and how necessary that is or how not necessary it is because everyone has their own opinion about that i'm curious to hear what what you guys think about that right in in terms of sun vanished i know before you and i knew, knew one another maybe even I mean, rod you and i have been talking for a while now but I, I know early on when i first saw this project out in the wild i saw all the you know like the telltale um oh my god is this happening is this real like the the most beautiful comments an arg creator could you know could hear or you know see yeah, written on the project so i was like huh this is pretty cool and like you know, I, I'm older now, and I, 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 you know, I know if this is showing up on Twitter, it's likely because it's one of my friends in this, you know, field, you know, retweeting it or liking it. So I was yeah. like, oh, like instantly hooked on that like iconic shot of the the shape in the sky. I was like, that's really that's really freaking cool. Like I knew immediately what I was looking at, but seeing all the people saying like, not literally, but you know, is this a game? That was like. I was so happy for whoever was doing this at the time. <laughs> so, I mean, I know at least to those people, and maybe in the fleeting 10 minutes they interact with the story if they don't stick around, that that's something awesome to to achieve. And I, I think, totally. I mean, if we're just talking about that straight up, Rod and I have kind of discussed this as well. If you're just starting out, I would personally try to maintain that illusion as long as humanly possible. And, you know, mm. say nothing about it behind the scenes publicly try to keep people I, I don't know at the end of the day all of us are really just online carnies and I, I think that's something we both need to remember and often forget yeah I, th I, I, I feel like this goes into a little bit of the territory I, I was clearing this uh, question with Aiden before we started um, that's a pretty sweet toy truck toy car Yes. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I wish I had one of these. Um, Aiden, <laughs> one of the things that uh, struck me about the Sun Vanish itself is that not a lot of people realize that there uh, seems to be a, a very big disconnect between um, the amount of people that follow the Sun Vanished, which is around half a million people. I think it's what, 513,540? not quite yeah, sure at this moment like that. and you as a creator um separately you have around 13.7 uh thousand people following you right now just on twitter and it's really cool but the the, the question that i would i would like to ask is uh hold on sorry I gotta take care of this and you're running for your life right now it's yeah it's pretty I, i'm about to be if i remember the playthrough <laughs> Um, well, you just I, destroyed like, <laughs> one of the uh, figurines, so that's a big no-no in, in Blair Witch lore. Yes, which means that the witch does not like me right now. Um, yeah. But I got a pupper, so maybe she likes the pupper. So uh, the, the the question I would I would ask is, for people that are currently uh, creating their own stuff, what are your? I wouldn't say. Tips, I would say more general advice as an artist, as a creator. What, yeah, how, how do you deal with this? Um, your project suddenly working and the classic, like, who will approach you when they realize that you, you know, have a, a, a successful project, which is something that's yeah. so I don't want to say rare for the stuff we do, but it's just that the way yours exploded, you know, it's something that. We were, I mean, we were commenting on it like for the reason. TLDR, what's it like to have half a million eyes on your project? <laughs> Pretty much, sure. <laughs> Pretty quickly. That, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for, yeah, no, for summing it's, that up. It's really, I think it's important, at least for me, I quickly wanted to make sure to not let it go to my head because just seeing seeing creators over the years who do end up going big and then, like, you know their ego starts to inflate naturally i mean that, that some of that's going to happen anyway even at like out of your control and that's totally valid but i think that uh like separating yourself from that and just making what you want to make 
regardless of how many people are watching like the number like like the number is great and it's a great number to have especially if you're like pitching it to anyone or, or using it in a professional oh, definitely. sense definitely yeah but emotionally i think it's really important to detach yourself from that because you want to make it just like you were making it before because that's when it's good that's what people wanted to see that's what that that's why you got the big numbers because so many people liked it when you know liked the content that you made when you had zero followers so continue that's doing that yeah like you, you did you said like you wanted it to appeal to a broad audience and and that happened right do you think you do you know if there was any like one incident or do you, do you think it was just mostly organic because I, I know when we spoke with um k of uh, mary mary i think they said that uh, like a big youtuber like matt pat or somebody like retweeted their their work and that was what you know skyrocketed them at, at a certain point so do you, do you think it was just the broad appeal or do you think like there were some like major you know events along the way so this is okay so this is kind of a little story that's interesting so um uh fantastic daily i don't think i'm allowed to say his real name uh but fa <laughs> fantastic daily so he uh, are you guys familiar with that that channel I've, inside I've of mine heard the name wasn't there something about like a big reveal or something about them wasn't there yeah so he he um so inside of mine made a made a great video about this but he that's exactly what i'm thinking of yeah 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 so it was a it was originally a a, a and kind of an arg about black guy kids that was disguised as like a top 10 like youtube channel um that slowly got a story more and more as it went um after the that the incident the falling out of that kind of failing just because the paranormal community latched onto it and got really pissed when they figured out that it wasn't real and that's a whole nother thing we can talk about in a second um oh, man, definitely <laughs> but uh he like after i think it was like six months or something like that he came back and was doing stuff like legit like he was like all right like i want to like i'm kind of i didn't he didn't really want to do the arg thing anymore for obvious reasons so he pivoted the channel and was like oh well what if i like do the actual like not top 10 but just investigating like spooky stories or like paranormal stuff um stuff in our field uh what if i started doing that with the account so that's what he was doing by the time that um that he and I were uh, working together a little bit. So, because uh, I was editing his videos for, for a hot second. Um, but he, so I, I made The Sun Vanished at that point. And, and, and keep in mind at this point, this is, uh, sorry, I need to give more backstory here. I when, I, when I made the Twitter account, it was just going to be a promotion for a short film I was working on with a friend of mine who um, we just like, literally did it like it was completely spontaneous there wasn't a whole lot of planning we had shot a little bit of the short film just as like a fun like hanging out with friends type thing i came up with the vague ideas of what was going on uh and then i was like oh well you know i do arg stuff what if i what if i make like a promotion for this short film as a twitter account um and i had just casually sent it to fantasa daily and he was like, dude, we got to make a video about this just to show mm. off, like, what's going on here. So we did. Um, and at that point, people knew that I was editing his videos because he did. He was doing, like, regular live streams as well as these normal, like, uh, analysis videos. Um, so people knew that <laughs> I was editing his videos and knew me, but didn't know that I was behind it at that point. So that was interesting. But um, that was kind of the catalyst uh that that kind of really like made thing like really made the the account hit the ground running um, so it was almost like a like a built-in audience yeah at least well, that was small part that was the that was the 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 lucky part for sure i'll, I'll fully admit that that was pure no, luck that, that's for me to have yeah well it, so it was great and then it started like blowing way up because he uh the channel i'm trying to remember how many subs it had it was like it's like 30k 40k so oh, okay. it got some it got some traction um the the sun vanished and then it started growing beyond that completely organically and i was pretty surprised at how fast it was growing um 
is then like eventually like soon like Rainbot made a video, Netspo made a video, um, you know, all these guys like uh not secure team, but uh the other top ten channel, I'm trying to remember. Um uh, uh Nuke's top five, that's what it was. Nuke Nuke made a video. Um and so it just started growing organically from there. I never reached out to any of those people. I didn't like nothing. That was just all like magic straight up. So I was like, dang. So I, <laughs> so from that point on, I was like, okay, it was like, yeah, I think the timeline was like a couple days after uh, the fantastic daily video came out. I was like, this is getting a ton of traction. I should probably like restructure this to have, like, like, forget the short film. I'll just do this as a full-blown ARG, hmm. incorporate all the story elements I was going to do for the short film into the ARG and kind of rebuild it from there. I, but at I that point... That's, that's a wonderful that. Yeah. yeah, let me help my buddy out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it was amazing. And I... But the interesting thing about that is that, like, none of this was planned. Like, I didn't... Like, I was restructuring, rewriting, doing more writing, expanding lore, all of that as I was going along. Uh, had none of it pre-planned. Um, so a lot of the account was just me flying by the seat of my pants. Oh, uh, we're, we're familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Absolutely. I don't know. I, I, I get the sense that I'm, I was an atypical case uh, of just, like... The amount of stuff that I that I was not prepared for and just was, you know, sprung upon me because like, oh, people are watching now. I should actually like, like really put some effort into this, which kind of contradicts what I said earlier. But I I also think it's like, I wasn't my goal wasn't to please the people. It was like, oh well, now I now it's like it's like an accountability thing of like oh, oh yeah, I actually no, have to see this through. <laughs> yeah, and at the end of the day, no, I, I completely know what you're saying there. And at the end of the day, though, you can say that you know drown out the you know outside voices and everything. That doesn't mean you don't still hear them. You know, it's sure. easier said than done to not allow pressure, you totally. either perceived or genuine, to to affect your your output or you know exactly. at least your schedule. Well, I think a lot of that is is good feedback. Um, mm -hmm. just in terms of like, like, that's what, like, I started building the ARG around was like, uh, people, like what, how people would react because the character TSV would be reading the replies. It's like, he would like respond to them and then that would like change his, his attitude or his mindset or his strategy, all those things. So it was very interactive in that sense. And that was one of the great things about not having it very many things pre-planned because mm -hmm. i had the ability to be flexible and just run with things if someone said a certain thing i was like oh what if you know what if tsb <laughs> thought this because of what that person said and then now boom it's an arg because it's like you've got that direct interaction there um, yeah, i think one of the first things i saw in the wild you know regarding your series was um something like about a car chase like you, you the character was trying to get his friend back or, or some other yeah and i remember like how many people were like some of them were angry and some of them were just excited and i was like whoever's doing this that's like you know good on them good for them <laughs> it was seeing like just you know dance puppet dance <laughs> right yeah seriously just having people excited is you know that's the whole point of you know making it a public you know influence project Totally. You, know, you, you could just say, I, I went and got my friend. I got shot at the end. But it's like you're taking these people, the viewers, along with you. Uh, right. That was awesome. Yeah, Thanks, taking man. them for the ride is like, I, I feel like the just the sentence, let's take the viewers for a ride, is just ARGs summed up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's the summation of it all. So I think it's really funny that, like, oh, yeah. So he took us for a ride. <laughs> in a car chase yeah, yeah and, and that's also something i know if like that was my responsibility i'd talk myself into circles and make the make this this convoluted you know you know excuse for why he's not typing rather than just say you know say screw it go for it and tweet it all out you know this is how the story is being told right Deal with that you know like yeah some people get you know too caught up in the details and i think you know learning as you go you have to give yourself that freedom to 
say screw it and i think that's a perfect example of that because like, like i said if, I, if this was something i was planning i would have talked myself out of it right. yeah. yeah totally because then if, if you're planning it too much then the then the question is going to be well how am i going to film a car chase and it stops being about telling the <laughs> yeah. story and it becomes like how do i make this car chase cool you know you can, right you can drive yourself into the corner of instead of focusing on the story and having the, the car chase just be the vector for that story it becomes like this is about the car chase itself that's a really and good if point you do need to use the car make sure it's a friends or relatives rather than your own that's the the big <laughs> takeaway yeah okay that's something i bad. i just realized here right now and it it, it I don't want to be the dick that says, oh, my immersion. But just just look at the ground very closely as I walk forward. Uh, you see oh. that? It just pops is that in. Immersion? Is that a, a map loading? Yeah, these are chunks. That's a map chunk right there. Oh, see? lovely. When I walk yeah. here, this <laughs> map loads. When I walk over here, that map loads. These are chunks. That is very interesting. I never realized that. Cool. I'm gonna write an angry letter to the CEO of yes. Enterprises tonight. <laughs> yes. Dude, that's that's how the ARG subreddit feels to me all the fucking <laughs> time. Drives me nuts. Yeah, for a while I was trying to not so much participate in ongoing projects, but at least just catch up and keep an eye on certain things. And I, I think the three of us here have all, you know, loosely discussed this in you know various text chats and things about like where do you know where do you read about this stuff and then i remember you know more recently on reddit the change between arg and unfiction and people mm -hmm. who are open to different definitions and people who get really upset about different definitions oh, yeah and it's like you know see at the end of the day it's like you know we have two usb cables let's make one that works for both of them we have right. a third usb cable yeah Fuck, you know we, we gotta start over and it's like I think the more defined you get trying to make those types of communities, you'll get people who are like looking for, you know, what you want to talk about, but it's a smaller pool of people. And it's like, I wish, you know, with anything, this isn't just about ARGs, but it's like, you need to make a you know definitive small community to feel, you know, like human appreciation, but then you can't find anybody else who wants to talk about it. So then you open yourself up to all these people that can bog it down with noise. And right. I think that's kind of, at least with some communities I've come across, it's like, how are you going to be elitist about a web series? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the other reason why I've kind of like, especially it's been it it has been refreshing in a lot of ways to jump into TSV and be working with a mostly normie audience, if you will, that doesn't give a <laughs> shit about the the you know they don't they don't care if it's ARG or unfit or whatever the fuck it doesn't fucking matter. It's just mm -hmm. a good story, and they and they're engaged. That's all that matters. That's all yeah. that I strive for. It's all that anyone should strive for. I mean, um, the the whole like unfiction debacle comes into play whenever like people people try to keep it from being analyzed whenever it's like whenever it's it, it's in the what you just said right now and that point i agree like yeah it's a good fucking story it doesn't matter what it, what it's defined as if it's good it's good who gives a shit what it's called but the thing that i personally find is that having the the term you know the terminology being right. applied in order to kind of analyze how it works and how it doesn't i think those are the only moments oh, where sure you know that we should really look into it. Okay, right. I'm fucking lost list. in the in this forest, and I have no clue what to do. <laughs> Let's load the map again. There it is. Yeah, no, oh, I, I completely. I am with you 100% there, Rod. It's like the words are just words. They're they're not going to harm anybody, and I think that's why people get angry about it. Like, why are you getting so upset? You know, we're trying to discuss this, like you said, almost academically. Yeah. It's like, yeah people will split hairs over that but i mean personally you know with with emh it was hard to just you know define what it was early on and i wouldn't care if people called it a web series or an energy or, or whatever but I, I think you know now that this is more common knowledge and we have those you know terms out there i think that's they only serve to help you know future perspective you know creators on that or you know producers or any sorts of these projects because like 
genre itself can be a marketing tool. Like I, I know yeah. how much certain plot points in my project was specifically because the analysis I saw was on, you know, existed on, you know, these, these message boards and communities that talked about ARGs and whatnot. So, you know, you might, if you never saw that feedback, you know, that, feed, that feedback loop never happened, it would have been a very different end product. So I think, you know, you might sound pretentious or whatever, you know, people get upset about, but it helps, you know, broaden people's minds. I think it's, it's only a positive thing to have more ways to define what we're trying to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, and that's what like I mean, even even the uh, the creator of of the initial ARG definition, like there's a whole article that he wrote about um, how he wanted it to be purposefully open ended and not place a bunch of restrictions on it <laughs> for the very reason that we're arguing now of like. Well, is it technically an ARG or not? Like, who gives a shit? Like, it's, <laughs> it's ironic that a term that was purposefully set aside to be open-ended still, I mean, obviously can't just incorporate everything, but it, especially in the immersion category, the, the level of immersion it was very open-ended purposefully so that it better to incorporate more and maybe be wrong than to start gatekeeping and like being a, a separatist essentially <laughs> well, I, I know something that i mean it, it's simple to it, it seems like the people who would gatekeep about it want to make it something it's not like at the end of the day as you know it's very popular now but i know like 10 years ago you know i say this as a, a fan of professional wrestling uh -huh. know, wrestling was and always has been a goofy thing but right. it should be who, yeah, and it should be. And people who see it on TV or go to an event, they immediately understand what's going on. They know, right. you know, you're never going to surprise somebody by saying, you know, that's fake, you know. It's like, no shit. Like, <laughs> you're watching to enjoy it, though. And I, yeah. I think at least, you know, this might be a small subset. This might just be my own, you know, people I know who were like this. But I feel like the people who complain about immersion and things like that or just the, the grown-up versions of you know it's fake right like they just want to you know rain on a parade for you know whatever reason whatever self-righteous you know feeling there is for that yeah because like i think really at the end of it we're talking about horror args in particular it's really you know for like when we were when i was in my teens doing this stuff it probably didn't sit well with a 30 something year old dude oh, shit, cold. okay sorry teenagers. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, a dude getting scared by a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! Oh, fuck, fuck you. What are those things? Aiden, you know the you know the lore. Lore master, protect me. Uh, I don't know what those are either. <laughs> God uh, damn it. The, uh, so the one thing I've been trying to hold back for as long as I can, I kind of don't like this game because it doesn't use <laughs> any it's, of the lore from the it's original okay. lore project. It's okay. We will we'll t we'll tell you this later. And because we can't ruin this surprise right now, but don't oh. worry about it. You can shit on it as much as you want. Yeah, we okay. don't have to protect anybody's legacy. I mean, you know, good you know, kudos to the actual developers of the game, but the oh yeah, not, totally. No, they did great with there. what they were given. <laughs> I just don't. And the dog is wonderful. Yes, but I'm just. I'm. I'm a very. I, I'm not a lore goblin about a lot of things, but, but Blair Witch is one of them. One of them. I have. I have the book. Sitting right next to House of Leaves on my on my desk over there. See, I so. believe you because I I can hear you like turning around Ooh, to look okay. at it. Yeah, <laughs> I believe you because it's like I have the book somewhere around here in my room, <laughs> which is like it's not a warehouse. I'm not I'm not kidnapped. Don't worry about it. I haven't when been it, kidnapped. Blair Witch Project is so interesting too. Like I love how the lore is set up because it's very believable and doesn't really like any dipping into the realm of the paranormal or abnormal is very subtle and very realistic. Oh fuck um, off! Versus this. <laughs> it's funny fuck. I'm on the, the live stream rather than the Discord stream. So I can anticipate anything. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Rob's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, wearing man. headphones. So, 
Okay, 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 so the headphones are working. I thought, yes. for a second, I thought it was like backwards and I was like, please don't do that to me. Don't put <laughs> sounds behind me where they're in front. It's like the uh, yeah. it's like the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 uh, gameplay, kind of. Right. Oh my goodness, Rod, we should totally... No, no. Nature, do it. Play oh, Slender do the it. Arrival in the next one. Oh, oh my Slender God. No, but it, you have to play it then, Jeff. If we can figure that out, then I'm down. Modern 52 is not Slenderverse. EMH is Slenderverse, so you have to play that one. Oh, uh, you know, that's fair. Yeah, I'll uh, play I'll play Containment Breach. Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll play SCP Containment Breach and Unity. You'll play Slender. It's a deal, but don't put me hold me to that. So, Aiden, we, we know, you know, obviously the, the short film or, you know, sun vanish you know side project or you know yeah rewrite that's your your next bigger thing ha has there been anything you've been watching or keeping up with in the world of you know horror or online media um i've been playing the new amnesia today yeah uh, actually, yeah fantastic a lot of people are excited for that was it, it made by the so original good. creators yes okay got it Okay, because you mentioned yeah. that a machine for pig was was poopy because it wasn't made by yes. the, the original. Got it. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a frictional games uh, production, and it it very clearly shows. Uh, Soma, uh, their previous game after the original Amnesia, is probably my favorite game of all time. Not Soma's lie to you. absolutely phenomenal. When I played it, so it blew good. my goddamn mind. The Dude, idea. Same. The idea, and, and I think this is a, an idea that doesn't get, you know, discussed a lot, this idea of sentience and incorporating yeah. the horror into into a video game. This idea that, like, oh, you're switching bodies. You as a player right. maintain your, your, you know, sentience, but does your character. And do you, you know? Did yeah, you leave... Exactly, did, you, did I leave a rod that existed for 20 <laughs> years... Now I'm 25, but, you know, did I leave a rod, a 20-year-old rod behind, and now am I, like, a one-second-old rod who thinks they're, 20, they're 20 in a second, you know? It's like that. It, I, I love that idea. It's I absolutely know, beautiful. I just shat on it, but I think a machine for pigs is free right now on the Epic Store. If it is. Is it that. the Epic Store? I thought it was the Xbox Game Pass, but... It's both, potato, potato. I think. Yeah, they, they probably went free to play on a bunch of platforms at the moment. Okay, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this tape right here. Because it says the dangers, and it's supposed to be like, oh, use it to survive. Oh, there might have a couple like of tapes. I, I like how the tapes function in this game. The game the game mechanics in this are very pretty inventive. Yes, I will agree to that. Although maybe I can make um although the one thing that pisses me off about this game is that they use and I'm I'm okay with them using tricks to like to to mess with you. That's one of my favorite things about games. But this game specifically uses certain tricks that are like they're a little Kinda annoying. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay if they're dirty tricks. I don't mind. It's just just respect my intelligence. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. It's to me the thing that that like there was an <laughs> earlier section on this that. You're running, and Bullet kind of speeds ahead, and it's like, well, how the hell am I going to find them? But, like, I knew that that was going to happen, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just pay real close attention to Bullet, right? But then, as because I'm so focused on exactly what's in front of me, I noticed that they teleported me. They just teleported me to some <laughs> other area. That's and if, uh... if, you watch, if you watch the VOD later, you'll be able to see that suddenly a tree teleports in front of me. And it's like I did, I did notice that as you're playing, I was like, "Wait, what just happened?" Yeah. So it's like, come on, man. Like those kinds of things. It's tough to see major. Sorry, cut you off. Just major no, no, no. cutting corners. It's like I don't know. That's a, that's its whole to do about you know the quality of you know so-called AAA games and everything. Or how many games yeah. you ship incomplete, and it's like. DLC will fix it. It's like, I don't want DLC. I just spent $60. Yes, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, that's that's also why I really respect frictional games because they oh, hell yeah. they have their own engine, their own, which is by the way is still probably my favorite gameplay mechanics is is in their HPL engine. Um, Maybe that'll be my Halloween replay because I, I played the original Amnesia. You know what is it? Close to ten, fifteen years ago at this point. Ten years. Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah, ten years it's ago. Insane. And like I, re- I loved it. And then I remember uh, that I watched it with my friends that I lived with at the time because it was such a different kind of horror game at the time. You know, something yeah. new. So it yeah. Yeah. Really fun to go back to that. I man, I cannot. I'm only like three or four hours into um the new amnesia game i cannot recommend it enough um yeah, already blown knowledge. my mind <laughs> that's the <laughs> best feeling honestly it. like when you start playing a game and you immediately go oh oh yes <laughs> it's not pure horror but the game control by the people by remedy that's that was my discovery of the last year in game. Oh, that was like yeah. The one thing that I sat down and said, I want to finish this story. I want to play, you know, through this story. And it was really, you know, innovative and yeah. exciting gameplay as well. So I was yeah, like, I'm I not need to check that out. I still haven't. I still <laughs> control. Haven't that. Yeah, control is very fun. It's it's a fusion of Alan Wake with, funny enough, SCP Foundation, and the way oh. they did it is like. They did the foundation better than any found any person that does foundation stuff did it. It's funny. Some elder corn in the chat says SCP community is really cool to them. How a bunch of people came together to make you know good horror stuff. I, I think yeah, the collaborative nature of that sort of thing is easily one of my favorite parts of it as well. Right, you know, Rod, I'm with you too. Control out SCPs. Any SCP game I've seen, which. Yeah, to yeah. be fair, Remedy is a huge, you know, triple A studio. Well, so that's sure, expected. <laughs> sure, but then again, like, you know, triple A games flop all the time because they're just bad. Oh yeah, you know. So, um, the thing is, you know, mentioning the the SCP Foundation, I have my reservations when it comes to the to the community, because at the same time, it's such an amazing community, and at the same time, it's like, ugh, I in. Like well, you're when gonna we have people who want to make it theirs, not realizing that the collaboration is an invite, it's an invitation, it's not a stake of ownership, yeah, right, right, yeah. And th- that's honestly my biggest gripe with the community right now is that apart from the, the, the insane shit, like the pedophilia accusations and whatnot, and grooming shit that happened in the SMA yeah, yeah, Foundation, yeah, I've kind of distanced myself from of online communities. <laughs> oh, that... yeah ruin it for everybody yeah Yeah. originally the reason i made sure to separate m52 from the wikia was that i became like painfully familiar with the fact that if you're not buddies with the people that control the site your article is not going to get seen it's just it'll just be buried the thing is, if you, like Aiden, if you posted the sun vanished in the in the SCP wiki, let's say, let's say that that was an SCP, and you made a whole story there. If you're not friends uh-huh. with the people that run the place, it would have been buried. A yeah, brilliant that's... genius story like yours would have been buried and forgotten. And I have seen time and time again incredible stories just being completely buried because it's it, they're not part of the the power group. They're not part of the plastics, you know. It's like it's it's what? ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I see that as like a I, that seems like a reoccurring issue with these little subsets of of horror communities. Like like that's the exact same issue with the no sleep subreddit is that there's like there's a weird like monopoly thing going on where like you you like your story has to apply to these rules, blah blah blah. Like very right. specific, very I know, I like not. They literally just experienced that with no sleep. It's funny you bring that up. Oh man, it's so frustrating, and that that really ticks me off because stuff like that is so it has so much potential to like build. And I, you know, segueing back into TSV stuff, that's so that's one of the things I want to aim more for in the restructuring of the Twitter account is more collaboration with and with the audience being able to like 
write their own aspects of the story and kind of build out the universe themselves in a way that is still controlled by me for obvious reasons because quality control but also yeah, like, right obviously I'm not, it's it's still I'm not your gonna, story yeah exactly but it's not going to be like a like a thing that you know i see going on with these other sub communities where it's like like seem it, it definitely seems like being controlling for the sake of controlling rather than just like you know upvoting the good shit which is all <laughs> yeah. you should be doing yeah yeah you know, and that's the thing the with any online community the the people that make it what it is one way or another they're gonna leave sense. eventually and it's like yeah. who takes up the reins from there on out it's gonna be a right. whole different cycle of good or bad and you just have to hope that you leave some sort of controls in place that protects it from the bad but then you see how quickly that falls out from underneath itself yeah right. but but even then like the idea of like it i don't know it's it's a complicated issue because it, at one point you know all of storytelling everything that has to do with storytelling in human history has been a relay race you know it's been one author passes the torch to the next willingly or unwillingly and eventually you know we get to where we are today you know you know, aristophanes wrote plays and then eventually you know the the, the chorus of frogs eventually led up <laughs> to creepypasta movie 11 the proxy wars which is a masterpiece you know it's it's like there's a picture of uh, aristotle pushing over a domino to sam jackson yelling about the motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane exactly so willingly or what unwillingly you know the the stories we tell will evolve as time grows on and at the same time that yeah we want to make sure that there is a level of control to our own subset of stories there is this quality to storytelling that prevents us from having any control of it. and i think that's the most interesting thing because you know like the first person to come up with the scp foundation you know, I owe the fact that I created M52 the way I did to the fact that they couldn't control me. To the fact that they couldn't stop me from saying, yeah, none of the stuff they wrote is canon. <laughs> Everything is wrong. This doesn't apply to me. Yeah, yeah, nope. My world is this, and I get to have a cool OC. Don't steal. Their name is Ripley. <laughs> you know, so it's like... Cool OC, do not steal, please. Yes. That's honestly how Ripley kind of started, and now he's cool. He used to be very edgy. And I, mean, he's not I don't. The, the thing is, it's like with these types of communities, like I completely get it. You know, like I literally texted my friend today, like, you know, when you're done so and so, let's you know do whatever you know collaboration, blah blah blah. And they're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And it's like, don't mind. Ooh, oh, I thought I did not see your dog. I just saw the red collar coming at you. Um, I kind of accept it. I kind of accept the death for a second there. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's like, I mean, usually it's used as like the butt of jokes, but like, yeah, everyone knew the kid in high school that was like, yeah, man, let's make a band, man, you know? And like, I don't think that's so much like being a loser or being like a, you know, low self esteem kid. I, I, I think people just want to you know do stuff with their you know, people they care about and i know like you know i have you know a couple of years ago you know, four or five close friends that i'm always like you know let's let's work on something you know, let's make a short film or or finish our goddamn series you know when that was still going on and it's like if you bring that type of relationship online then that's like it's literally what we're talking about so i can't fault people for trying to make these collaborative you know communities but i, th I think uh, it also does draw in some unpleasant types of people as well that see that yeah, as an opportunity unsavory to characters <laughs> so yeah i don't know i don't fault people for trying to get Ooh. into it as i've tried to join some or you know wanted to inspire similar communities before but with everything oh it jesus sorry well, that's why I'm wondering. I'm I'm curious how it'll because so far, so I used for for the Nat account side of of the Sun Vanished, 
that whole account for the longest time before developing the character aspects of it was really an experiment in how to um, alleviate game jacking, which was a big problem early on. Yeah. Of people like making their own accounts and being like, oh yeah, the sun vanished, I don't know what to do. Like that kind of stuff. And I was like, ugh, this is. Uh, like I appreciate, uh, I'm, you, I'm flattered, but it's frustrating. Are to you deal telling with. me it's not real? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you kidding um, me? Wow. Aiden, get <laughs> off my show. I thought that was real. An hour and ten minutes. I thought the sun literally vanished. Wasted. <laughs> Wasted. So you, you built yourself a control to safeguard yeah. against game jacks. That's yeah, that's exactly. Excellent. So I gave them a conduit. Here's an account where you you submit your story dm whatever experience could be photos video whatever and, and submit whatever you want and then it'll get posted to the account if it you know if everything checks out if you're not like like i i didn't explicitly say the rules but people quickly learned what the rules were you know you can't you can't add on extra lore use what's already there use what you know uh and develop your own characters and your own experiences and then talk about it um and that my was like crazy successful. black hair and is invincible <laughs> <laughs> yeah not not the role playing stuff but OCD it was, yeah. they can they can transform into the sun and so when they do the sun didn't vanish anymore you yeah. should totally not mock me it but take all the rejected ideas and make a what if episode at the end of everything oh, oh man everything the, that you had to scrap becomes I would I would love to do that if I was actually keeping up with all the all the <laughs> discarded ones. Sorry to say. Well, I just I, at that, that level cool. it gets so drowned out. I like. Oh no, I'm sure. Picking a, a a drop out of the ocean. It's it's insane how many people, even to the main account, will submit tons of things or ask questions and DMs and stuff like that because the DMs are open. The video starts and it's just a white noise for an hour and a half. <laughs> Real. surprisingly no issues like that most of it is just like like the the worst offenders quote unquote are literally just kids goofing off having fun like in their in their houses with the lights off uh which is like kind of f fun to see and to appreciate uh the uh the effort there um and you're, i'm super thankful the, that that's the worst you're the scary stories to tell in the dark for the twitter age like that's awesome god i never thought of that it's so weird yeah. No, I mean, oh. think about it, though. That, that's really what creepypasta is and anything related to it. It's like we had dorky books we'd spend too long in the library and take home with us. Or, you know, we saw the early fledglings of the Internet you know, when we were in middle school and high school. It's like we wanted to see that weird stuff. And, you know, we download three LimeWire EXE toolbars in the process. But it was where we went to, you know, find creepy entertainment so that, that's all these projects today are it's that modern iteration of that sort of this is how i'm going to creep myself out as a kid and you know past time yeah totally that's so interesting huh oh yeah so i'm um, what <laughs> all of that to say i'm hoping because that was sort of a, a neat experiment to see how well that would work and that was fairly successful and it and the brilliant thing too is that it, it keeps keeps anonymity with the the author so there's no like it kind of removes the uh the like someone can always like go and tell their friends like oh yeah i posted this this thing to tsv and he tweeted it out it's crazy but there's no like ownership taking really uh on a large scale or like you know it, it removes that temptation so i yeah. wonder how far i can go with that in the future and you see might have... what brilliant things can come from that you might have figured out a way to effectively utilize game jacking and for that, <laughs> yep. for that you are uh you're in the hall of fame for the internet storyteller like <laughs> how else can you leverage game jacking the cardinal sin of viewer creator interaction yeah positive? well i hope other people do that like it would be really cool to see other creators do that as well uh, in the future i haven't seen anything quite to that extent yet but i'm looking forward to it because i think it's a really cool opportunity when when presented to you well it's kind of like a you know like a comedian or you know a stand-up comic being heckled and then them turning it around and making the heckler laugh 
and that sort right. of thing going viral. It's like, you don't yeah. have to, I mean, it's easy to, and you're completely justified in putting people giving you a hard time down. But mm -hmm. if you can make that interaction with them positive, then literally everybody wins. And it's like, you know, that's yeah. more luck or interpersonal skill, but you know, if you yeah. consistently on small scales with, you know, game jackers, then that's all the better for it. For sure. I mean, to really be to be quite honest, the whole idea of game jacking really does give you a measure of like, oh, okay, so people really like the story enough that they're willing to be douchebags about it. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing exactly. something right. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's always a... Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a... Because I know over the years, it was a frequent thing. You know, there were numerous game jackers. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's what's funny because now after the fact, now that it's no longer, you know, something that I'm trying to, you know, that I need to monitor every day. It's funny because as much of a pain in the ass as it was when we were alive, like, that's not the first thing I think about now. You know, like, I don't see yeah. it as, it's definitely a pain in the ass as it's happening. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, like, unless they're, like, really stalking you, you know, and giving you sure. actual issues, it's something you can kind of just laugh, you know, laugh about, because it's really not that serious. Nine times out of ten, it's usually just, you know, kids being For sure. kids on yeah. the internet. But it is, yeah. it's just interesting thinking about it, you know, as a, you know, who, who fucking has to deal with that? You know, if you said game jacker <laughs> to, to your parents, they'd be like, me, what did you call me? Like, yeah. they wouldn't know yeah. what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, that uh, yeah, that's a really good point too, and I, that was definitely the attitude that I had going into it. The interesting thing, which I wasn't anticipating, was just the because the viewership was way larger. the The ratio of game jacker to normal viewer was the exact same, but the numbers were infinitely bigger. <laughs> so, like dealing yeah. with like, I mean, at some point, I think I counted like. Like like over two hundred accounts. Oh my god! Of like ongoing, not just like one off posts, like ongoing game jackers. So I was like, okay, this is like a legit. Like I need to. This is a lot of raw energy and creativity that I should try to harness. I have and see to what say happens. something. <laughs> Go for it. No, no, no. I, I mean, you in that position, it's like I need to do something about. This. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I wasn't yeah. about to admit. Yeah, one of them was me, Aiden. I was Sunvanish55509. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm fully expecting, like, someone somewhere. Some shoot a drop. <laughs> yeah, for, like, uh, <laughs> get, like, a dashboard confessional and just be like, yeah. I, uh, I mean, uh, that was know, me. Yeah, in our small group of, you know, friends we, we've made in this, a, a ton of them, I mean, Rod, and we even joked about how we first talk to each other, you know, not really acknowledging our projects, but it's like, that's why we know each other. You know, let's get to the point. How many yeah. people we know and like are good friends with today weren't necessarily game jackers, but were on that weird, like, I want to be involved in this project, but I'm not involved in this project. Right. I, yeah. I think, you know, and it's just proof that if you're not being a creep and not being an asshole about it, it's going to be a funny to positive interaction you know, with everybody involved, but it's like some people just don't take the hint. And I think yeah. that's, that's I mean, an issue in, in any inner human you know, interaction. Yeah. yeah. This, I mean, this is not to say like, oh, you like if you, if you want to be friends with like these people, oh, you, you should always go out and seek them. I like, am not advertising game jacking or parasocial <laughs> relationships. I will block your ass immediately. But it can sometimes work out. Dang it! My my Everyman Hybrid account was about to take off. I was gonna DM you, and you just my totally shattered my dreams. Um, our <laughs> buddy Jay, he he's a long time viewer, and God bless him. For a while, we were so good about. You know, I was so good about uh, responding to emails to the EMH, you know, Gmail account. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, though, it's like, well, you know, one at one point, I, I fucking died. So it's not much I can do there. <laughs> right. like, there is nowhere in the story for us to, you know, like respond to people. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm bleeding out my eyes and my two friends are dead. Sorry, I can't <laughs> talk right now. So it's like at a certain point, answering a customer service email just isn't practical. But that was the running gag. Like anytime a story hit or drop, he's like, I sent them, you know, quote unquote, Vinny a hint about this i sent them another email so it's like no matter what happens like the sun is exploding or like 
the you know the moon is crashing into the planet he just tweets out email sent like there there's funny you know quirks you can develop in people who are genuinely trying to play the game with you that that isn't towing that line into you know game jacking or anything right you still laugh about it after the fact totally. yeah i mean it's, it's, i mean some viewers stick out as that guy about you know some sort of interaction and usually you know, usually it's a positive or funny thing but you know, obviously that guy it can be used as a negative connotation as well sure yeah jesus game jackers it's either like game jackers are either like absolutely hilarious because you know you you can't you, you don't even you're not even mad you're just like huh, okay all right nice try can but you know with this? can i use this <laughs> yeah yeah there it's either that or like oh my fuck really because the thing is like i one of the main things for me is just that when um when i first started with that shit it was like how you know how am i going to deal with this kind of stuff yeah and then and then somebody game jacked and i was like okay time to put to practice what i said i was going to do right <laughs> and what were you doing there sure except they were so nice and they had such a cool idea i was like how do I, like, at, at the same time that I don't want to acknowledge, like, a game jacker as something good, because that'll want to, like, give people ideas to keep doing this kind of stuff. At the same time, I don't want to steal this person idea and pretend like I came up with it. Sure. You know, so when I did it, was like, I contacted them, you know, directly. And I was like, hey, I, you know... As much as I don't appreciate the fact that you game jacked, uh, I can understand being excited about the project and I appreciate that. But you know, I think your idea is really cool. But next time, if you have an idea, you know, just send it to me. You know, and then I'll, I'll I'll be able to I'll be able to talk about it properly and think about whether or not I want to use it or you know. And they were very nice about it. And then I had a second one. Then I had yeah. a second one. And when the yeah. second one happened, this person, this person found my address. Oh no! And I, I don't think I ever talked about this. They show up in front of my my apartment. I was living in LA at the time. Show up in front of my apartment, and I, I've never. I, I don't have a firearms license. No, I don't. The second I look outside, you know, I get like a ring. And I lived in like, I'm not going to say a gated community, but it was like, um, it was, uh, it was, oh God, I'm having my characters having a PTSD flashback. Um, so it was not a gated community, but it was kind of that. No, I'm, I'm not rich. It was a rented apartment. And I knew that they couldn't get in. But at the same time, I was like, I, I'm not going out there without a weapon. Yeah. You know, like I am terrified. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And then I remembered, like, oh, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a boxer and a, a, a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't have to worry about that. But it is fucking terrifying. So I go outside and I'm like, hi. What the fuck are you doing here? And they're like, Oh, I just came to, to, to like drop off some stuff for your new episode. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they're like, you know, the thing that is happening in the store. And I'm like, guy, no, no, like, Jesus. get out of here. Go home. Never contact me again. Like, seriously. And... They got really mad and they started yelling and I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna call security now and I'm gonna go home. And like I was I I said that I was gonna walk away, but I walked away and I kinda hid to see what was gonna happen. Security had to come in and drag him out. It was like it Whoa. was it was so fucked. And from that moment on it was like anytime somebody game jacked, I 
I end up was like, look, I'm sorry. But nip that in the this, bud immediately. Yeah, I, I would, because the Monarch 52, um, because the Monarch 52 Discord is the official Discord, you know, like, what I announce there, everybody sees. So I would always put announcements like, no, this is not a real thing. And whenever mm -hmm. a new character comes in, I'm like, yes, this is a this is an actual character. Oh God, I can hear the Blair Witch behind me, and this is this is uh... stop. Yeah, I, I was gonna bring up the subject in, in a funny way, but I mean, I guess yeah, anything dire like that as well. No, please, has, like, please bring it up jackers? in a funny way. Have people ever tried to like communicate with you in game on your personal you know, social media accounts? I haven't had yeah. that, thankfully. But, but have Aiden they done it to like, you? Aiden? It has for you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. no, I've had that happen once or twice. Well, see, the entertaining thing is, at least from my perspective, because the the interesting thing about TSV is that there is a surprisingly large foreign uh, market <laughs> demographic for that 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 is like really invested. Um, <laughs> are they wait, are they Russian? Uh, do like Russian, <laughs> Middle East, uh, like, like literally, like it's amazing how like it's worldwide. It's interesting. Nuts. No, that's excellent. I was, I was just joking because it seems like a inordinate amount of people are either Brazilian or Russian, and it's like the pro like people following us on our personal accounts. I'm like, hell, is it's been over for two years, and they're like. <laughs> it, it, it's like a like an album just dropped. Like you're posting pictures of like like screen caps of the videos and stuff. I'm like, does it, does the internet like just literally take two years to like move or something? Yeah, no. So worldwide, I mean, I guess that's too yeah. Be expected yeah. with. I mean, I'm Brazilian and I'm a fan of both of you, so it's that makes a little sense. different, Rod. You're not a Brazilian <laughs> middle schooler. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, this is like Unless. this is like someone who like was speaking very broken English. Clearly, was trying their best. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, no, I'm so I, sorry. I think this it, is, that's awesome that you can. This do is not that real. Today. Yeah. No, yeah, they were like, is this real? I this saw you, like, real. follow... You follow TSV, what's going on? The is, like, TSV is, follows you. Like, the this is real tweets are always the best, best thing in the world. Like, is this real? Well, especially when it's something as apocalyptic as the sun fucking disappearing. <laughs> like, you would think... I don't know, go outside and look! That yeah. might... I mean, yeah, you know, you can't trust everything you read, but that might come up on the news if the, the sun had vanished. I, I Maybe. don't think you'd have to troll Twitter for that. You know, yeah. it's 2020. I don't, I don't... Oh, God, I hear screams. No one new, uses news outlets anymore. Okay, it's cool. all Twitter. Yeah. That's true. It's on the Twitter trending tab. That's all I care about. <laughs> yep. No. It's a joke. It's a joke. I know. I mean, I like it. Is it, though? <laughs> Dude, I... Not gonna lie, I... A Twitter trending tab drives me nuts. Ah. I didn't even realize it was a thing until like two years ago, so I don't blame you. Ah, uh, yes, this is the Blair Witch. My favorite line from the Blair Witch. <laughs> oh my god, you're the Blair Witch, 1999? <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're nearing the we end. Some kind of Suicide Squad 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Look into the camera. I guess <laughs> I have to escape from LA. Honestly. 1987. <laughs> Hands down, greatest fourth wall break is in Hot Tub Time Machine. What is this? Some I kind of hot tub time machine? That right now, drop everything you're doing. It's really but, good. Uh, yeah, I, I think we'll wrap up soon. Rod, are there any burning, lingering questions we have for Aiden? Uh, yeah, so what is this? Uh, can you spoil all of the Spanish, please, in like two seconds? Yeah, yeah, I got well, you. Ten, 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 ten seconds, lightning round, spoil everything about uh, the Sun Vanish. Go. No, here, so I'll just send you like a Google Doc of like all of my lore of TSV, and then you can show it on stream. No, 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 no. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it even better. Send me, send it to me right now, and I will show it uh -huh. on stream. I'll just, I'll just show everybody my reactions. Hold on. <laughs> okay. okay, hold on. All right, thank you. Thank you, Aiden, for sending that. No fucking... What the fuck? <laughs> Bro! Wow! So, what this, are you replacing, so Rod, on the next truly, truly, <laughs> this is... Truly, this is the Sun Vanish 2018. Indeed. Aiden, All right. 
if Rod doesn't have questions, then I'm gonna say thank you for joining us on Pumpkin Emoji. And Dude, we wouldn't so mind fun. pick yeah. out a viewer from the chat so we can eliminate them and sacrifice Absolutely. Them the Hold on, I need to rejoin the chat. Thank Hold you. So, but yeah, but yeah, thank you so much, Aiden. We really, really appreciate your presence here. We've been a Dude, delight. I love being here. Yeah. Let me let me come back. I would I would love to. See, oh, yeah, no, we totally we, have ideas to like keep doing this in the future and just right. have, having fun with it. If we don't keep the exact same format, you know, Absolutely. we can do with you know, friends who have helped us with this so far. And at the very least, I could picture a uh, pumpkin emoji uh, among us at some point in the near future. Yes. Oh, yeah. Get everybody Absolutely. together. All right, I'm going to say uh, Elder Acorn seems like a great, uh, great person to eliminate. Elder Acorn, you have a Twitter handle you can post in the chat? I don't think Acorn has a Twitter, but I know them. They're really cool, and you picked a good a good victim to sacrifice to the pumpkin god. They will be sacrificed. Thank you, Elder, for joining us in the chat. Yep, your, hold on. Your I, I'm going to summon them. I'm going to summon them into my room. Hold on, give me a second. Uh -oh. Another game? Ooh! What the shit is happening? Uh, I'm Why having like get so cool as we're getting off. PTSD flashbacks. My character was a soldier. Oh, that's not that cool. Yeah, that's, no. that's kind of sad. Yeah. All right, Ricky. All right, eight court is in my room now. Hold on, let me stick my entire hand down his throat and pull out his intestines. <laughs> there it is. Beautiful. Oh. That was a very God, that was a haunting scream. <laughs> I will hear Thank that you. Noise the rest of my life. It's almost as if we've heard this scream before. It's so familiar. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. Really, really appreciate your presence. Aiden, you have been absolutely stellar. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we and you. on Thursday with the next pumpkin emoji. Yeah. Oh. Should we should we give away who's coming in? On Where is it? Two no, on Tuesday, yeah. Is no, wait, Thursday. no, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday the twenty second. Should we spoil who it is? Tell me, I want to know. It's up to you. you. You always do it one way or another. We can't because we don't know who it is. Oh shit! <laughs> oh damn, man, you got my hopes up. We yeah. know, we know who's coming on the twenty seventh, and that's a surprise. We can't say it yet, but you'll find out uh, this Thursday who it is. Time. Next I'm time excited. on Dragon Ball Z, will Aiden and Clea defeat the evil Boo? Find out next time. Uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank See you. See y'all next time. See ya. Goodbye. <laughs>